Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden and something that I really like to do is to spend a bit of time researching ways that us gardeners uh, can save more time and produce more food especially if you only have limited space. So in this video I'm going to show you three simple things that I have done that have been low effort but have led to huge yields. The first thing is what I'm doing today which is harvesting the first early potatoes which is always so much fun and the thing that I have found to be the single best way to improve the productivity of this garden and it took a bit of time uh, to really get used to it over the last few years but is learning about succession planting and I can't tell you enough how much of a difference it has made for the productivity of this garden. So succession planting is where as soon as you have one crop that goes out you want to have something else that is put in and there's two ways to go about it. The first way is planned, which is what I'm doing here. These potatoes, uh, I actually checked a week ago on one of my Patreon videos to see if they're ready to harvest. And I said, no, I'll give it another week, which is what I'm doing at the moment. And with potatoes, especially first earlies, I know that these are usually harvest, um, especially where we live, kind of end of June um, through to early July and at the moment it is the 2nd of July and because I know when they're going to be harvested I know that there's then going to be a whole empty bed uh, which in previous years would often just be left uh, and that was frustrating because it was in the middle of summer and I had empty space and so the way that I've been able to deal with that is by planning succession and making sure that I have a bit of an action plan. So what is actually gonna go straight after I've harvested these potatoes is I'm gonna be transplanting leeks and I'm just gonna quickly show you how those are looking so you can get an idea of how as soon as one thing comes out, another is gonna go in. Here are the leek seedlings and I like to start them off outside in a seed bed like this. We've got four different varieties including Autumn Giant, uh, Lion, Musselburgh and Hannibal and these are getting to a pretty decent size. They're not perfect, usually you want to aim in perfect terms for uh, something that's around the thickness of a pencil but leeks can be smaller than that and they're going to work just fine and these are all ready uh, to be transplanted. So what I did with my month to month plan was to make sure that I start my leeks off in April. So when it comes to end of June, early July, they're going to be ready to be transplanted into the potato bed. So in that way, I'm really trying to make sure that I have as much food growing in a single space as possible. Another example of planned succession planting was with the broad beans, which I've started harvesting and removing the plants uh, to make way for leafy greens. Uh, I'm also growing beetroot there as an exception, but that is another example of planned. But there is also a way of doing it where it's unplanned, where you don't have to always plan ahead and start sowing things. It's more of getting a feeling of what might be good to fit into that gap. So I'm going to show you what I'm thinking to do with the onion bed. Here's the onion bed and I'm looking inside and some of them are looking really big but I'm not going to start harvesting them for probably another week or two because I just like to get them as big as possible um, but I'm really pleased with how these are looking and I haven't actually made any plans for what's going to follow on from these onions but I've had a bit of a time to think and something that I like to do is to just be a bit flexible and I've realised that Beetroot are amazing, they can store outside over winter, especially if you put a bit of hay or straw over them, and they can act as a real staple, plus they're great for this climate. 
So what I've done is I've started multi-sown using the Charles Dowding method, multi-sown beetroot in modules and they're just beginning to come through now. So when it comes to the big onion harvest, I can then put some beetroot in. And also in the other garden, we have some spare kale seedlings. So I'm also gonna put those in. Um, I might give a little mulch of one to two centimeters, but as you can see, I'm not following crop rotation. And that's just a quick tip uh, to take away something that has really helped make this garden more productive is not being limited to following crop rotation instead focusing on just looking after the soil where possible feeding it with organic matter such as compost um, and letting nature do its thing using succession could be one of the most revolutionary things you can do to improve the harvest and productivity in your garden and it's always a constant learning process and there's always ways for you and for me to improve how we use succession. The top tip I'll give you is that having undercover growing to start off seedlings such as beetroot to replace the onions is a huge help um, and to also watch a video that I've made all about succession planting so you can find out a little bit more. So the next tip is quite a fun one actually and it's about kind of getting in tune with intuitive gardening which is something I'm going to cover in a dedicated episode later on this month and very often no matter how hard we try uh, and make a really good solid garden plan gaps emerge and I'm going to show you an example of where that has happened and how I now approach things like that. I'm just giving this bed a much needed hoe and you can see there's a couple of gaps here in between this Kailan 60 day kale, um, mainly because it was a little bit too windy um, and the other ones are looking fairly healthy, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how they do, but there's a gap and I didn't intend for the gap to happen but something I'm really beginning to do now is looking at what kind of spare plants I have available um, and just thinking what on earth could I put in there and it doesn't always have to follow a crop rotation so here I've actually got this is um, fairly old and it does need to go out sooner rather than later perpetual spinach and so what I've decided is these ones because I had over sown um, not looking too good but they'll grow just fine and in fact if I just come around here they, they're going to grow quite well in these gaps so here i'm i've kind of got that flexibility of not always having to follow a plan and just seeing where there's a bit of space and putting something there i'll just show you another example um these are leeks i had these leeks spare these were grown in seed trays uh, rather than in the seed bed as you saw earlier this video and there's just kind of gap uh, in between the radish um, and I've got other things planned for here but because this gap emerged I thought tell you what I'll just put some leeks in and it is so fun because otherwise I might not actually use this space so how I approach it is I see an empty space that isn't used and I just think to myself what would suit it at this time of year so I'm going to show you a few examples of using that mindset in action around this garden. Here's a corner of the asparagus bed and I thought that this little area here would be the perfect home to put in a courgette. Here I lost an onion plant so I actually decided to put in a cosmos and I know you can't really eat it but the idea is that it's going to flower and just help attract beneficial insects and it looks nice. This tiny section here was empty and I had two spare Swiss chard plants which I put in and look at the harvest I'm going to get off them. As I was growing these runner beans I felt that there was a bit of space on the base so I just grew some extra parsley all the way around and I've been harvesting loads of it but I'm getting that extra crop and this as well is related to intercropping. And then another example is saw this kind of spare bit here and I thought this would be ideal to put in a row of turnips. What I love about the method of 
finding a gap and seeing the opportunity and food potential is that I'm not following any rules and uh, I can just choose what I want. And it's such a quick way to get things filled and just get more crops from the same area. And I really do, I strongly encourage you to definitely give it a go if you're not already doing it. And it took me a bit of time uh, to get used to it. The idea of not following my gardening plan to a T. But ever since changing over the last couple of years, it's definitely given us a lot more crops. Now I've saved the best till last for this tip. So what is the third simple way to get loads more food from your garden? Well, this one excites me the most because it's about a mindset shift. And something that I learned the hard way, uh, especially a year or two ago, was that trying to be super productive and only trying to be super productive in the garden wasn't very enjoyable. And because of that, I think the garden suffered a little bit. So I had to change how I thought about the way that I approached growing food. So I felt that I needed to have a fresh perspective on what productivity meant for me. And I kind of changed productivity to pleasure because I think there's definitely a strong correlation between enjoying something that you do and then how good does that activity become in terms of output and quality. So all I'm suggesting is instead of trying to grow food uh, to grow as much food as possible, instead try and grow food for your personal pleasure. What are the things that you most enjoy growing? What are the things that you most enjoy eating? Don't worry about having to kind of fill in the hungry gap or what things are best to store. Instead, just focus on what gives you the most joy and pleasure. So what's so good about gardening for pleasure instead of productivity, especially when it comes to growing food? Well, the first aspect is the motivational aspect. If, it's, if you have a garden that's designed around pleasure and joy and fun, then you're gonna want to go up to the garden and enjoy the whole process. Because sometimes, as I have experienced myself before in the past, if I just put too much pressure on trying to grow lots of food rather than anything else, sometimes I don't want to go up to the garden. And that was a really sad moment that was also quite an eye opener. The other thing as well is that part of gardening and quite a big part of gardening is that you will encounter failures. In fact, you'll encounter failures every single growing season. That, that's just part of it. Um, but it's by understanding that if you grow food in a way that you enjoy it in the whole process and for example the peas here you really enjoy planting them using the rain gutter uh, then you make the uh, bamboo structure and you see them growing up and perhaps the the pea crop fails for some reason or it gets blown over all is not lost because you've enjoyed the whole process. Rather than if it was just in terms of productivity when it comes to food, you'll feel very deflated um, and it's understandable, of course. But instead, if you just frame it in a different way, again, in terms of pleasure rather than productivity, what you're going to find, and quite suddenly, is how much more food you get from the garden out of that because suddenly it's enjoyable you don't have any pressure on yourself and without that pressure you have a moment or time or chances 
to make rational decisions um, or intuitive decisions that end up making a really positive impact. And I just want you to just think a little bit more about that because that has perhaps been the single biggest help for me in terms of making this garden a lot more productive. And what I actually found was that there is a way where you can balance having a lot of fun in the garden with producing lots of delicious and healthy food. And I went on this journey trying to find lots of ways to work smarter rather than working harder. And I was really surprised with the results. And I ended up making an online course called More Food, Less Effort, which shows you all of the kind of mindsets and tips and tricks that I use to really find that balance. So if this is something that you like the sound of, head on over to morefoodlesseffort.com. I've almost finished preparing this raised bed, just raking it over, ready to start planting leeks in in just a few minutes. I've left a plant there with some kind of wild flowering plant that I think looks nice, especially with it cascading over. Um, and sometimes it's just nice to let nature do its thing a little bit uh, in, in a garden where we do have a bit of control. So thank you very much for watching and for those three points. Hopefully uh, they're gonna be helpful and gonna help you get more food from your garden, especially the third point. That has definitely been so pivotal and for those of you who are patrons i've uploaded a video showing you five more ways to get loads more food from your garden and if you're not a patron then i do wish to invite you over it's patreon.com forward slash hugh richard and i put two extra videos every single week about growing food and kind of the behind the scenes here in the garden so thank you so much again for watching and i look forward to seeing you again soon goodbye